Hello again. This is a circa 1880-1890 tunic to a colour sergeant of the 2nd Volunteer Battalion, the Border Regiment. It's your standard Victorian Edwardian pattern red tunic of the infantry of the line, but the insignia that's on it denotes the regiment through the collar badges and the embroidered shoulder strap insignia. That's the only thing that denotes the regiment on it. Other than that, it's a standard tunic of the period with a Victorian crown, white metal, general service buttons as they're called, to denote a volunteer unit. And it's got the 1870 to 1888 pattern, white metal volunteer border regiment collar badges. It has the China Dragon, but it doesn't have the battle on a China. So those are the standard white metal um, 1870 to 1888 pattern militia battalions of the Border Regiment collar badges. On the shoulder, each shoulder embroidered directly into it, 2V border in a really nice pattern of wire embroidery. That's on both shoulders. And again, you have the general service Victorian crown button. General service Victorian crown buttons down the front. White metal denotes militia volunteers of the period. Um, on the arm, you have the insignia of the colour sergeant. Now, a colour sergeant is a non-commissioned title in the British Army. It ranks above sergeant but below warrant officer class 2. It came about in 1813 during the Napoleonic Wars to reward long serving sergeants. And um, Historically, a colour sergeant's job was to protect the ensign, which was the most junior officer who carried the regiment's flag into battle. So originally, historically, a colour sergeant's job was to protect the guy who carried the flag to rally troops into battle. And this soldier was awarded the rank of colour sergeant during the Victorian period because there's a Victorian crown. And also, over here, on this sleeve you have a really nice Victorian pattern wire embroidered marksman's badge awarded to the best marksman in the army, gilt wire embroidered, magazine Enfield rifles, and then the guy went on to win other marksman awards because this is one with an Edwardian crown. So it's both covering the Victorian era and the Edwardian era. And then these stars are additional marksman stars for shooting at a range greater than that required for the cross rifles badge. It's a really nice wire embroidered all the way up and really nice thick thread and wire embroidered insignia being on there forever. I mean, that's this cross flags and that crown is actually fixed to a red patch. And that red patch is sewn to the tunic. So these aren't sewn on the tunic. They're sewn onto a patch of red, which is cut out in that shape. I mean, you can see it going up there, around there and up and around here. And then that's directly sewn to the tunic. So that's an 1880, 1890, something like that pre-Boer War tunic. In this case to the 2nd Volunteer Battalion, the Border Regiment. Now on it, it's got the Valise Pattern Equipment, 1888. Known as the Slade Wallace Equipment. Um, it came about in 1888 by 
being invented by a guy called Colonel Slade and Major Wallace. It was for use with the first 303 inch calibre rifles and it replaced the 1870 pattern equipment. It weighs 25 pounds, it became the standard equipment for the British soldier for quite a few years. Um, it's in a buff leather which originally was whitened using pipe clay and that eventually became known as Blanco. So this is the first time Blanco was ever used by the British Army. Um, unfortunately, it had its faults because when this stuff was made, it was made for the first 303 rifle, which was a charger-fed rifle. And unfortunately, if you look in the pouches, the pouches are made for 50 individual rounds. Totally unsuitable when you're loading a rifle that's fed by a charger or a stripper clip. So this was problematic. Also, when it was used during the Boer War, it had a tendency to be cumbersome and crack and become unwieldy. So this pattern 1888 gave way to the pattern 1908 webbing equipment. But some colonial troops were still issued this equipment during the East Africa campaign in World War I. And in Britain, stocks of this were brought out for use by volunteers to use in training. And the last use of this pattern 1888 Slade Wallace equipment was in around 1939 for ceremonial purposes by the British Guards regiments. And in some instances, the belt still lives on today in the Guards regiments for ceremonial purposes. The buckle is standard of the period with the motto Duet Mondroid and the Victorian crown. And later on, it will be replaced by a St. Edward's crown. Then later on, it will be replaced by the current Queen's crown. So it's just a standard pattern uh, brass buckle of the period. It's a kind of hasp and clasp, it kind of turns and fixes bayonet fitting. The white leather equipment, as I said, was standard for the infantry, but it was also coloured black for rifle regiments. And it had a surprisingly long survival life, so you do find it. But what was its downfall was when the magazine rifle came in, as you can see from the guy's qualification badge, rifle with magazine, totally unsuitable for magazine charger clips as it only held individual rounds. So it was eventually replaced by the 08 pattern, which was the standard World War One weapon equipment. Over the back, yeah, ignore the piece of string. This is how it all goes together at the back. Yeah. Bayonet frog. Sometimes these will have lots and lots of various regimental markings, regimental numbers, issue dates, issue stamps. It's particularly true with the belt. You get lots of blacked out numbers as it's been reissued and reissued and reissued over the years. But yeah. So that's a Victorian tunic, 2nd Volunteer Battalion, Border Regiment, Colour Sergeant. And when I got this, I mean, I got, I got this on eBay about 10 years ago. I paid around £300 for it. Because all the insignias always been on the tunic. And it's rare to have a Victorian red tunic with all the original insignia still intact. Because what old men, old collectors used to do in the 1970s, these red Victorian tunics were completely valueless. So what the old collectors used to do in the 70s, They'd buy these red tunics for next to nothing. They'd cut off all the insignia, keep the insignia, and then throw the tunic in the bin. And inadvertently, by doing this, they've now made these surviving things their own collector's pieces. Because it's easier to find red Victorian tunic insignia not on a tunic than it is to find a red Victorian tunic with all its insignia still intact. And this button has come adrift but I found a button matching button on eBay I've got it somewhere I need to sew it on 
So yeah, this cost me around 300 quid about 10 years ago. Obviously, the leather equipment didn't come with it. I think I have another pattern of leather equipment somewhere with another tunic. I mean, these ones, these ones have the popper on the top and the buckled at the back. I think I have another pattern somewhere, which is a cartridge pouch and it's buckled up here somewhere. And I think it's got a king's crown uh, buckle on it. But yeah, the first time ever the British Army used Blanco. But, but back then, for, for keeping this maintained, it was known as pipe clay. And then pipe clay eventually becomes British Army Blanco. So a nice setup. Bye for now.